So what I have here is what I believe to be the future of off-camera flash photography. This is the Sony A93 and I want to discuss today how global shutter will drastically change the way we light our portrait outdoors. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. Now the moment I got this camera or the moment I heard about this camera, I was so excited already. My mind was going everywhere thinking, you know what, if that is the principle behind global shutter, then that means that my flash can actually work like a 1200 watt flash, my tiny speed light, and I actually put it to the test and I can tell you it actually works. But before that, let's talk about this particular camera. So what is global shutter? Technically, what Sony did in this revolutionary camera is that it removed the mechanical shutter. In other words, how it gets exposure or how it captures an image on its sensor is that every pixel now turns on simultaneously. So the entire sensor just turns on and off, which then allows the camera to actually have a shutter speed. Well, not technically a shutter speed anymore because you don't have a shutter, a mechanical shutter, but it allows the camera to capture an image way faster than any mechanical shutter out there. Therefore, this camera can actually shoot at one over 80 thousandths of a second, which then allows you to control basically the sun at any time of the day. Now, what is the implication of that one? Well, number one, it can have 120 frames per second. Yes, this particular camera can actually shoot 120 pictures in one second. Imagine that, that is slow-mo video with high resolution pictures. That's why this particular camera is already revolutionary without even talking about off-camera flash photography. So when it comes to motorsports, when it comes to sports, when it comes to birding, any nature photographer, this camera will really will destroy the competition. But what does it imply with off-camera flash photographers or how does it work for off-camera flash photographers like myself? Well, as I said in my intro, the theory is because I can control my existing ambient light with my shutter speed without having to worry about flashing speed, high-speed sync, which you lose a lot of power, I can technically shoot wide open any time of the day and have my shutter at one over 80 thousandths of a second, still control my ambient light, and have my flash just basically fire enough, well, give enough light to give a 1.2, 1.4, or 1.8 exposure. And that's basically what this camera did. Before we get into more detail on how this camera achieves that, let's talk about the physical characteristics of the camera, which I actually was caught by surprise. I thought it was going to be the same body as my Sony a7R5, but when I felt the grip, it just felt different. It's heftier, it's easier to hold, there's more grip for you, especially with those with bigger hands. Now it's got the same articulating screen that I love for my Sony a7R5, so you could do vertical, and then you could flip it, and you could do horizontal tilting, so that's fantastic by itself. Now, the buttons here are actually slightly different already. The design of this one, I hope they do with all Sony bodies because it does feel better. Now here you've got a dedicated dial just for your shooting mode because you know, this is a sports photographer's camera because it can shoot at 120 frames per second. So you've got high plus, high, medium, low, and of course you've got your focusing modes right here. Then right here, you've got an additional button, which, has, which is basically the C5 button, and this is for overdrive. In other words, when you press this one, it'll just shoot 120 frames per second. So fantastic, right? Now, how does this thing actually work for flash photography? Well, prior to global shutter, we were always limited by what we call the flash sync speed or high speed sync. So high flash sync speed is basically the camera's capabilities to sync with your flash depending on your shutter speed. In other words, the older cameras would have a flash sync speed of about 1 over 2 50th of a second. That is the time that the front curtain and the rear curtain is open, therefore exposing the sensor to light, which then now the flash syncs to that one. 
This one has a flash sync speed of 1 over 500, so that in itself is already fantastic. But if you wanted to shoot outdoor and you wanted to control your existing ambient light, well, high speed sync allows you to go beyond the flash sync speed by giving bursts of light while the shutter is opening and closing. So there's a sliver that exposes your sensor and the flash will just keep firing, therefore giving proper exposure. However, the biggest downside of that one is that you lose a lot of power because the flash will just continuously fire and there is a limitation to how much you can actually do with that. But now with global shutter, it just changes everything. So prior to that, we had a few variables to consider whenever we get proper exposure. We've got your flashing speed, flash power, flash to subject distance, and of course, you've got ISO shutter speed and aperture. Now let's talk about the three things first. ISO shutter speed and aperture. Shutter speed basically controls your existing ambient light, so ambient light. The aperture is basically the opening of the lens that allows the light through to hit the sensor. So technically, when you're shooting with flash photography, you are replacing existing ambient light with your flash. So therefore, your aperture actually dictates your flash exposure. Now the third is your ISO. ISO controls the sensitivity of your sensor to light. Now with this particular camera, you are introducing another factor, which is called flash duration. So whenever you want to freeze motion with flash photography, the faster that your flash reaches its peak, the more freezing power it has. That's flash duration. Now you get the fastest flash duration, the lower your power settings is in your flash. So imagine those tiny speed lights at maybe about 60 watts. If you put it at its lowest power setting in the old technology, that will not be enough or you'll never be able to get the right exposure for that particular power setting. But now with global shutter, that is exactly what it takes advantage of. Now this may sound slightly complicated already, but don't worry, I am giving a practical application of whatever it is that I'm talking about in a video that I will upload after this. So if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so that you get notified the moment I upload that video. So where was I? So basically, I was saying that flash duration is now what dictates proper exposure whenever you go beyond the flash sync speed of this camera. So this camera, flash sync speed, as I said earlier, is one over 500. But I have successfully shot at one over 80 thousandths of a second, f1.8, and my flash power was only set at one over one to eighth power. So how does it work? Technically, flash duration, as I said earlier, is when the flash reaches its peak. Now this camera has what you call flash timing. So it times the peak of the flash exactly when the image is actually exposed using global shutter. That's when the image, is, uh, well, the sensors or the pixels are actually turned on to capture the image. So what happens? Why am I now able to actually control the sun using global shutter at a flash power of only one over one to eight? How is that possible? Because now shutter speed plays a very important role in getting your exposure. So take for example this situation. I am actually shooting outdoor. I set my shutter speed to 1 over 16 thousandths of a second at f1.2. Now my ISO is set at 250 because that is the native ISO of this particular camera. I'm now showing you some snippets of my actual shoot. Now you notice with this exposure setting, I am actually controlling the existing ambient light already because my shutter speed is the one that is controlling my ambient light. Now, my aperture is set at 1.2 and as I said earlier, flash exposure is dependent on your aperture. So since my aperture is only at 1.2, I can now just ask my flash to give me a flash exposure of f1.2, which is very easy for any flash unit. And that's why the global sensor of this thing is so revolutionary. Aside from the fact that it can shoot 120 pictures per second, video guys, rolling shutter, a thing of the past. Now for flash photographers, your tiny speed light can now overpower the sun even at broad daylight. 
So this is a Sony A93 with a global shutter. This is the future of all cameras. So if you want a simplified version of what I discussed in this video, don't worry. The next video that I am uploading is basically that. I shot with this one outdoor. I shot at 1 over 80 thousandths of a second. I shot at 1.2. I took some beautiful portraits of my wife Coco. And I just truly enjoyed shooting with this A93 and its global shutter and how we were able to control our existing ambient light with a tiny speed light. So stay tuned for that. Now if you have any questions with regards to what I discussed here, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel so that you get notified the moment that demo video is uploaded. And if you want to see our output photos, you could always find me in my social media accounts at Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, all at Jiki Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.